do anything. Um, but I think just um a couple things we talked about before in like previous case sessions, right? It's like one is like the making sure you ask a clarifying questions, right? Um, so that's that's pretty important. Um, your delivery is a lot better. Um, so just continuing to focus on your delivery. Um, but it's grown a lot. Um, and as well, um, with the with like math questions, um, to kind of clarify the clear, yeah, big ones clarifying the question first, right? So make sure you're answering the right question, um, and then structuring your approach and then tackling the math. Um, but just making sure, um, you're very um step by step in your approach to math problems, um, and so let me see, so. Okay. Yeah, thinking about looking at this now, actually, this this case is actually quite good for what you're hoping to do. So, right. Yeah, I'm glad I chose this one. I, I thought I did choose one that was good for you, but um, yeah. And then of course, finally, just the the conclusion. Just um, you know, um, the conclusion being uh, recap the problem, uh, recommend solution, um, give why and then give risks and then uh, next steps. So five, uh, five kind of key, um, key traits of a good conclusion. So for recommendation. Okay. Okie dokie, that's... Um... And oh, I'll just getting all the information, getting all the information. This is the last thing, getting all the information I say. Uh, this one I think is okay, but for some, some cases where there's a lot of information is making sure you get everything so yeah, i don't want to overwhelm you so far you're doing great let me but we're just going over like some of the stuff that we've come run into in the past you know so yeah great i mean any any practice would be very helpful be, uh, given we haven't i mean i mean i i didn't practice any i mean uh without you so mm -hmm. we haven't practiced any uh for quite a while so let's yeah, come so up a little bit and let's see how things roll okay cool all right. Well, then, with that, um, let me just get together my, you know, my email. I'm going to send you. Just um... okay. Great. Okay. So all set. Great. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, Ellen. It was great to get to know you and some of those uh, fit questions. I um, I like your energy. I I like how we're going. I like you as a candidate. Um, and so we'll see if you know we'll go forward. Uh, with your application. Uh, but right now, I think we should go into the case interview. Uh, what do you think? That'll be great. Let's do it. Great. Okay. So our client is Client Co. And they manufacture wooden boards installed on the wall, <clears throat> installed on the walls of houses. And they're thinking of entering the hot tiles product category. So hot tiles are tiles used to make barbecue decks in the backyards of houses. And they want us to help them understand if they should enter this market. Got it. So our client, uh, client co, at this moment, they're producing wooden board and installed, uh, installed in the houses wall. Right, and they're considering to launch a new product. It's called the hot tile, and which can be used as barbecue decks in the backyard. Mm -hmm. And they're asking our opinion whether should they launch, uh, this product or not. Great. Yep. Great. So, um, some clarifying question is the first is what is there any specific target, and our client has in mind. Um, so they are expanding, they're hoping to have $1 billion in sales in year one. However, profitability is not the focus. Um, just uh, particularly the sales figure. Got it. And what about in the future? Any other, uh, any other uh, requirements? No, we're just looking at the first year. Got it. And, um, uh, uh what are they located? Yeah, absolutely. So the client, they have been in the houseboard business for 20 years in the United States only. 
20 years houseboard business. And so this hotel uh, products is also considered only launching in the United States, right? Yes. And are they a, a industry leader? Uh, so actually, there there are no there's no direct competitor data for the hot tile segment, um, but we know that there are substitute tile products in the market called super hot tiles. So not just hot tiles, super hot tiles. Got it. So do do you have any more information? I mean, to help me understand how the hot tile and the super hot tile. I mean, what are the uh uh products do, and is there any other substitute on the market for uh, no so it, yeah it's to make the barbecue deck so you know on, on the patio for these houses um this particularly it is just the tiles um so um yeah so it is tiles that are used to build the barbecue deck and um yeah just the, again the competitors um are these alternate substitute products called super hot tiles so are they the kind of the same same products Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're pretty much a direct substitute. Got it. So, um, and quick question: You have any information regarding the uh existing? I mean, so for the hotel, I want to I would like to understand our products and they plan to launch more. So, is this a a product that's kind of with new technology and uh, no no existing um you know, comparable on the market or it's more like a catch up to what is already existing in the market. Right, yeah. So again, uh, there is a existing product in the market to substitute super hot tiles. And so this isn't like, this isn't like, you know- Pretty much about the same. Yeah, yeah, they're about the same. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a good substitute. Um, so nothing it's, super innovative. No, no, this, this isn't like a new technology. It's just um, another kind of tile, another um, tile product for, um, for, for making barbecue decks. Got it. So yeah, I think I got all the information I have for now. So can I take a moment to show you my thoughts? Please go ahead. Great, I think I have a framework to uh, tackle these problems. So our client is targeting to, uh, their question is whether they should they uh, launch a hotel product and to reach a 1 billion uh, revenue in year one. So there are four buckets I would like to look into. The first is understanding the existing market. So uh, what's the size of the market? And what are the players out there? As you mentioned we have a uh, competitors that have the super hot uh, towels. So um, so I, I would like to understand more about competitive landscapes. 
what percentage of market share we 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 aim to reach at and so will that uh, suit our goal of the 1 billion uh, revenue in a year one and also um um yeah so and then the second bucket sorry let me do that again i need to okay no, go ahead go ahead go ahead keep, yeah keep, keep sure yeah so yeah, there are there are four there are four buckets I would like to look 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 into. The first is the market, uh, the overall market. The second is the product we pl uh, we plan to launch itself. Uh, what's the uh, value proposition and how are we going to produce that? And this the third bucket is our go to market strategy. And finally mm -hmm. is the uh, economic analysis, how mm -hmm. the uh, revenue and cost that generated. So back to the first uh, first bucket. So within the overall market. So I would first would like to look into the size of the market. So for the size of the market, I would like to understand, do the estimation of the what's the new uh new buildings will will be uh, uh in the market for per year and what are the existing uh houses, uh the percentage of them they plan to do the innovation. And then the second I would like to look at the uh, competitive landscapes. What are the existing solutions are on the uh, on the market? And so how much percentage of the market share we plan to we plan to see within within the coming years. Mm -hmm. And then with and then moving on on the second bucket, so about the product. So there are two there are there are two things I would like to look at. The first is what's our uh, product of uh, value propositions? Uh, I mean, how we stand out and differentiate ourselves from our competitors' products. So is there any special um, like warranty, longer warranty terms, or do we have a really strong brand power? I mean, how are we gonna, uh, how are we mm -hmm. gonna differentiate our, 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 our products? And the second is uh, the, uh, the, from the operation side, so mm -hmm. how can we handle the manufacturing of the uh, uh, products? So what are the uh, setup costs? So are we plan to build a new factory or are sourcing that to our existing uh, uh, manufacturing uh, partners? So what are the uh, setup costs? What are the, uh, uh, do we need to uh, set up a, a new a team to do the procurement, to do the training? Do we have the uh, technology, know the, the know-how people to do that? Mm -hmm. So and then so moving on to the third bucket is about our go-to market strategies. Um, so within that bucket, there are several things that I would like to look at. So first is our pricing strategy. So mm -hmm. what are the uh the best price that we consider? Uh, what what are what are the um I mean the best pricing, the price level that we could reach our uh one billion goal, mm -hmm. uh, within the one year. And the second is about our uh um so how are we gonna do the sales our sales channel our marketing strategies are we going to leverage for example are we going to leverage our existing uh, wooden board uh wall uh sales channel mm. so are we going to cooperate with are we going to consider other cooperation opportunity like um like uh yeah. cooperate with agents a developer and offers them some premiums if they could sell our products when they mm -hmm. uh, sell the house. And the finally is uh, we need to look at the economics analysis. So which is wrap the previous things together to look at what are the potential revenue, what are the uh, potential costs. So for revenue is we we need to consider how what what is the best price and the considering the price and what are the volume. So regarding the cost, so the setup cost, including the uh, the the factory, the installment, and also from the talent side. So what about new workers, new uh, new uh, project management? And then what about the uh, uh, sales uh, advertisement and uh, other overhead? So those right. are the costs we need to consider. So, and overall we need, we will have a, a profit projections in the coming years and then we can um uh, we can see whether this investment this new products can match our clients expectation like the great. ROI uh, break up uh, break even point great great 
So yeah, without uh, I think the first I would like, like to look at the uh, the market. So mm -hmm. uh, to do some estimation, what are the uh, potential size of the overall market? Great, you're spot on. Um, so that's a great structure. Um, and so you're you're right. I think the next the best next step would be to look at this market size. And so our client would actually like you to estimate the market size of this market. Um, they would like you to determine what size of the market is this um, is this barbecue tiles uh, market, its size. And so um, please let me know if you need any uh, questions or data to help you with the calculation. Um, but they would like you to calculate the market size. Yeah, definitely. Uh, happy to do that. So if we want to get the, uh, um, I think the overall approach to get the market size is um, the first is we need to understand the, the, the number of the household in the United States. And so per household and uh, within one household, I mean, we, I need, we need to break down for the one that we backyard and the, the, the percentage that without backyards. So for the, uh, for the household with backyards, and we can also break it down. It's like the uh, uh, the new establishment mm -hmm. and the uh, existing existing building. So for the new 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 building, um, so for new building, uh, I mean there will be a certain uh, percentage they will install. The, the the barbecue or the barbecue decks uh as a uh, setup mm -hmm. and because uh, because this barbecue um and uh, within the existing building uh we also need to break down there are a certain percentage with barbecue decks mm -hmm. and there are certain that they don't have decks and they didn't plan to in install Mm -hmm. So with it, uh, so for the existing building, and they they have that or plan to install a deck, and there are also also a fraction of that will do the installation that within one year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's the uh, overall approach. How? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good start. Um, let me know if you need any information, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. Great. Uh. So for the uh, household, uh, for the for for the overall household in the United States, and given that we know there are three hundred million mm -hmm. uh, people in the United States, so we could guess there are a hundred million household in the United States. Mm -hmm. I like that. Right, and uh, and uh, mm, mo uh. Well, some some people some people live live in the uh in the metropolitan. Some people in the rural area. So, most rural area people they live in a house, which means mm -hmm. they have a backyard. And and mm -hmm. the, for metropolitan, most of them maybe live uh, uh mo most of them live in the apartment, which don't have a backyard. So if we take that into consideration, so amount of a hundred million, a uh, household, mm, Maybe so 15. Any, any like, what, what do you think? What do, what do you have any uh, data mm -hmm. on how, how, what the percentage of them have the backyard house? Yes, absolutely. So 50% of U.S. households, U.S. households are living in a house with a backyard. So not in high rises, apartments, and condos. Great. So great. So it's around 50 percentage. And the amount of 50 percentage that live in the uh, uh, house uh, with backyard. Do we have any data on how many are, are, are new buildings? How much are the existing uh, buildings? Mm -hmm. Great. So the percentage of households um, with houses and of the households with houses that and with existing barbecue decks is 30%. So 30% of all these households already have um, barbecue checks and our old customers that won't need new ones. Got it. 
So what about the rest seventy percent? Are they are they so among the among the uh, the the rest seventy percent? Uh, so what are the percentage they plan to install a deck where the percent they just don't like a barbecue? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So you mean the penetration rate? Yeah. Yeah. So the expected the expected conversion rate of new customers. So households with houses and no existing barbecue decks is one percent. Got it. So we have so within the a hundred million household only. Let me repeat. Just make sure I catch the the right numbers. Mm -hmm. Only fifty percent have a backyard house and among the uh the person with uh with household or uh, with, with backyard only 30 percent have have the uh have existing desk mm -hmm. and uh, among the rest 70 percent among the rest 70 percent so the conversion rate is only one percent mm -hmm. and uh, do we have any data on the uh uh, on the person that with existing, they already have the percentage that how, I mean, what are the usually the lifetime of the decks? How so, which means how often they need to uh, change the, the great, desk? Great question. Great. So the replacement period for a household with existing barbecue decks is about 15 years. It's about 15 years. Mm -hmm. Great. I think with this data, we could already calculate how many deck that will be needed in the mm -hmm. United States within the one year. So um, 50% 50, uh, 50 so we got 150 million household uh, 150 uh, house with deck in the backyard mm -hmm. and within the 150 uh, within the 150 and 45 million with a deck. So and the uh the replacement um time period is 15 years. So which means only one one over 15 15 need to get a new deck mm -hmm. within one year. So that got the number of three million. And so within the uh uh the backyard with no deck and the conversion rate is um the conversion rate is one percent and mm -hmm. there's 70 percent so overall that we got uh 0 0.7 percent and we we multiply that with 150 150 million so which is so which is which is one million? Okay, one million. What what's that figure? One million. One million deck will be needed. So for the uh, um, oh, it's um. Yeah, it's around it's around around one one million deck will be needed. So for the uh uh for for the uh house that without a deck at this moment. So overall the US market we can expect four million deck sell uh within one year. And so okay. what percentage of the market share that our, our customer plan to catch? Uh um, well, let's let's step back for a second. Um, so sure. we have all right. So we have um, just just to calculate how many households are old customers and how many households are new customers. Because I think I think you may be a magnitude off. Um, because you definitely had the right figures for a while. But I'm just wondering. Okay, so so just step back. So we have a population. Oh yeah, it's um, yeah. sorry, it's um, it's so all all the things add up together is around. Around around one million that will be needed. Does that okay. sound right? Is this sound more more more? I I. Yeah yeah so 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 you were you were right on it for a little while um so 
Uh, let's just step back for a second. Um, how many households? Um, how many households are there? A uh, hundred million. Right, right. And so, how many of these households um have a backyard? Fifty million. Right, right. And so, from that, um, how many houses? Like you said, you asked for uh current barbecue techs and not current, right? Yeah. So, uh, so we have fifty million with with backyard and mm -hmm. among that only 15 million have deck great, and so great. considering the replacement uh every uh, 15 years mm -hmm. so we can expect a 1 million sale of the existing um uh, customers great in the first year right great. yeah in the first year so, so for, the, for the new customers how's that yeah so for the uh, new customers and uh, we got we got 35 million mm -hmm. uh with no deck and with the uh, conversion rate is 1%, so which means it's 0 0.35 million deck will be sell uh, mm -hmm. in the one in in the in one year. So overall, so uh, just made three, three point uh three point five million? 3. 0. 0.35. Oh, great, good, great. Yeah. Okay, so good. overall, so we can expect 1.35 million deck sell. Great, great. Um however, we just want to consider um the the okay great great um the thing is our that that's great um so however the, the question that our our client actually would like us to consider is the actual um dollar, dollar value? revenue yeah not the number of decks great do we have any expectation how much the deck will be sell great great so the the price per tile is one hundred dollars per square feet one hundred dollar per square feet mm -hmm. And do we have an average the deck uh, size? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, the average deck size is 10 feet by 10 feet. 10 feet by 10 feet. So that is 100 square feet. Mm -hmm. so, so the average uh, deck installed will be, uh, that will be uh, 10,000. So per, per deck. So suppose suppose the average. I mean, do we do we need to? I mean, um, uh, now we have the average number. Do we need mm -hmm. to get the weighted average? I mean, how much they will build super fancy a deck, and how much will they build a uh, like j just basic desk deck? Do we need to take that yeah. into consideration, or just use the average number? Right, right. So, um, something to consider is that we have the price per square, price per tile, um, per square yeah. foot. However, um, probably think about what how big the tiles are, right, to calculate per deck. Yeah, we got we got the tile price is a hundred dollar per square feet, mm -hmm. and we have the average size is a hundred square feet. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so great. the uh, yeah, so the total value is ten thousand. Okay, great, great. Per, per um. Great. And so, um, so to yeah, the, market... the total value, yeah, you're right. So the total value would be a uh, 13.5 billion mm -hmm. overall market size in United States. So if we want to reach out to the 1 billion, so that is around 10%, almost 10%, 8%, 8 or 7%, 7% of the overall uh, market share. So I think that's a reasonable a target for okay. our client. Great. Great. Um, and so uh, what else would you consider um, regarding whether they should enter this market? Yeah, so if we want to, uh, so we want to enter, uh, uh, we, we want to see 7% of this market. And so for the next step, I would like to understand uh, do we have any information on the uh, uh, our Competitors, I would like to look at the competitive landscapes and to learn more about their products, their brand, and their value proposition, and how can we stand out um, to seize the seven percentage. Great. So let me. That's actually a great question. I actually have an exhibit that will give you a little bit of information of our competitors, or at least the substitute product. Let me pull it up really quick. very quickly. Okay, great, here we go. Great, 
great. So here's the exhibit. Let me know what you see and um, what takeaways you, you can get from it. Great. So for the hot towels, so quick question. So for the hot towel, it is our hot towel, right? Or or mm -hmm. other brands hot towel? No, so remember our, our hot tile is, is our client's brand and the substitutes would be the super hot tiles. So we already launched the products. We have already. So this is not a... Oh. Uh, but we're not oh. entering. So we already have, have experience with these products, right? Um. Yeah, that's a good question. Um. Yeah, that's interesting. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. That that's, that's strange. I, I wonder. I yeah. Wonder. Got it. Yeah. It seems like super hot tile is three times larger mm -hmm. than us. Mm -hmm. Great. I mean, is this the only? Uh, competitors in the markets or yes yeah, so remember the, these are competitors these are the substitute substitute um the market for the substitutes so um how would you take this uh what would you use with this information in estimating the market size for hot tiles yeah great so uh from 2000 thank you for the uh, clarification and so from 2013 to 2017 the market size pretty much stable. It's in 2013, we got 2000. Do we know what's the a number of the 2000, the dollar value or? Um, yeah, you could, you could say, um, say, um, the number, uh, yeah, it's the, the number of tiles, not the dollar. Yeah. Got it. So, um, so in 2013, we have 2000 and 2014, there is a dip as around 15, uh, uh, 1500 mm -hmm. and 2015, we have, oh, we have, we have 4,000 mm -hmm. and 2016 and we have, uh, we have 4,000 uh, and in 2017, it's around 2000 again. And so, wow, the market, the, the native is quite fluctuate, uh, mm -hmm. fluctuated. So uh, in 2013, and our, uh, we, we have one fourth of the market. And in 2014, it's one third. 2015 is, is one fourth. And 2016 one fourth, and 2017 is one fourth. So our our market, our market, uh, share is pretty much stable except for 2014. Um, yeah, that's very interesting to learn. Mm -hmm. So um, so just just going back to the the market sizing, right? Oh, good. Good, uh, good, great job. Um, looks like there's a 25%. Um, so for the market sizing, remember we were trying to find the market size for the dollar number of hot tiles sold in the United States. How would you use this information for that? Yeah, so uh, great, uh, great. I think you're you're absolutely right. So if we can catch like 25 percentage of the market so which means we can get 4.5 billion already um yeah yeah we can so we the can overall pay. market is is 13.5 billion uh dollar value and so if we can catch up one force so which is 25 percent and that is I mean that that is four point three billion. So I mean, but our target is only. Um, I mean, I'm. I, I just hope you can help me straight yeah. it out. So our target is one billion. Is that? Mm -hmm. is, so is is there anything any information that I missed? Right, right. Um. Yeah, yeah. No, it it this sounds good. Um. But yeah, I see that you um you calculate the total opportunity to be around three point five billion dollars in this um. 3.5 billion dollars in this in this space right for the for the total opportunity of this market size for hot tiles 
to be around 3.5 billion. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, and then you have the $1 billion um, is our is our target share of the market or target target revenue. Yeah. Great. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that sounds good. And so you said 7%. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's great. Um, and so, yeah, so, so I, I think that's great. I think we should move on from that. Uh, I think you did a great job. Um, so just following up, our client would like to ask you, what are some, uh, what are some considerations that our client should consider um, in regards to entering this market? So what would be some ideas you would recommend our client consider for entering this market? Yeah, sure. Can I take a moment to structure my thoughts? Yes, please. Go ahead. Great, I think there are three things we need to consider. And the first is the price, and it's, it's our pricing strategy and the value that we offer to our customers. If you want to, uh, if you want to catch up the 25% of the uh, market share, um, so, uh, so what are the also what are our uh, value proposition that we stand and we claim that we can offer to our customers? Do we focus on the durability or do we find, uh, do we focus on a uh, much attractive price? So that's the first thing we need to consider. And the second is about how is about our marketing strategy, mm -hmm. how we how we present our products, what is are our image, what kind of customers segments that we are targeted? Are they uh like are if, if, if for example if we uh target uh target Gen Z, maybe we need to consider uh to do some uh to 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 invest the marketing on social media. And but for example if we want to target like 40, 50 or even uh, people already retire maybe we need we, we want to stick to the uh, old way like doing mm -hmm. the marketing via mails or uh local local stores local networks so uh and th that is the second thing we want to look at and the, finally it's about our sales channel uh, chat chat ch channel so mm -hmm. so f for example about what kind of retailers that we want to cooperate do we want to sell in a home depot or local stores? And second, are, do we want to consider to build up our um, online muscle and do some direct to customer sales that could uh, give us them some even more uh, even more uh, price advantage, give it, give us even more price advantage. And the, the third is, do we want to consider like cooperation with um, the developer or cooperation with uh the large um uh the large real estate agent when they do sell a new house they could they could promote our products um yeah and 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 oh and also when we do sales do do we want to consider any financial perks any discount to attract uh new customers or maybe not new customers. So when they refer to other customers who come here and offer them some, uh, some, uh, some benefits and mm -hmm. bonus. So, great. Great. Oh yeah. Those are some great ideas. Um, so any information that you need, uh, that you think you would need? Yeah. So I think the, um, the first, the first thing I would like to look at is about, uh, uh, is about our uh, price strategy. So 
when when I, I know the 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 data you offer is a hundred dollar per square feet. So what what uh I mean what customer segment are we targeting to? So is it kind mm -hmm. of below the average or over a premium tile? Do we have any data on, on that? Um yeah no I uh that's a great question um so uh some some information I would give you is um the super hot tiles if you remember from the exhibit um have higher sales and that's largely because these tiles they have larger heat resistant properties that can be used for more applications and that's that, that's some information about the um the competitor product or the substrate. <laughs> They have higher heat. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's just, that's just some information um, that I could give you. Uh, is there anything else that you'd need or that you're interested in? Do we sell at the same price? Um, there's there's not quite information on that, uh, but I you can imagine it's comparable. Got it. So uh, the information you offer can't. I mean, I'm not quite quite familiar with the tile business, but the information you offer, can I understand is like, and because they have a higher uh, heat uh, resistance feature, so which means they are more safety. Mm -hmm. um, and are, so regarding the safety issue, so it, when it uses barbecue deck, are they also comparable where they are way much safety than our products? Right, right. So um yeah, they're they're comparable in terms of um just products yeah. except that super hot tiles are um better heat resistance. Um and so I just want to go back to some of your brainstorm. What what else would you consider uh as important to look at uh regarding your you know your brainstorm some ideas? Um where you know what what other um important consideration would you like to look next into if we were to enter this market given some of your brainstorm ideas? Yeah, you are right. So, um, so for the uh hot hot tile, uh, I think except for the things that are already mentioned, um, I would I would like to explore. It's just like hot, uh, super hot tile. They have other, uh, application opportunity. Do we do? Well, is it possible our hot tile can be used other ways? So which means do we have any other market to explore except for just use as barbecue uh, deck? Um yeah, there, there's not quite information on that, but um it would be uh it would be um um just we, we're just looking at barbecue decks for now. I, I do want to ask you in, in regards to your brainstorm, I, I I imagine you're actually missing something quite key in um in regarding whether they should enter the hot tile market. Um, because you had mentioned you had mentioned pricing, you had mentioned uh branding. Marketing, sales yeah. channels. Sorry, and yeah, you mentioned sales channels, um, which is and great. You... So pricing, marketing, and, and sales channels. Um, I think you're missing something key uh regarding the supply chain for this um for this product. But could you uh possibly brainstorm maybe a um uh, uh one or two more main ideas that would be important for our client to consider? I mean, I just want to clarify, are we already producing these products or not? Uh, no, no, we're not yet. However, in the market total is, um, there are already hot tiles already sold on the market. And so our client is interested in entering that market, having not had those products in their portfolio in the past. So hot tile is, uh, is, is it's already like, existing. It's, it's, it's already like, so, so how tell is not our product's name. It's the mm -hmm. type of the products. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I see. I, I thought we plan to launch a new product and we name it as hot tile. Oh, no, no. This is, this is an existing, this is an existing product on the market already. Um, they are just looking to enter the product category. Oh, I see. Got it. Got it. So that's why I got so confused regarding the market side and you showed me the market share. So I said, are we already launched that already or not? I thought that one fourth is something that we already sell. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, I, I see what you mean, yeah. Um. However, your, your market sizing uh, wasn't too bad, Um. but I just do wanna go ahead, you know, having 
having a good estimate of the market size, what what else would you consider? Because I think you're missing um a key, you know, a key, um, a couple of key considerations for this market entry or entering a new market um for a um a yeah, product. definitely. Uh if we I mean yeah, definitely. So if we want to enter the market, we need to figure out how to set up the manufacturing mm -hmm. procedures. Great, great. What are our, I mean, are we going to using our existing manufacturers? And and what about the talent pool? So what are the uh, fixed, uh, fixed um, investment capex? And what are the uh, ongoing variable cost regarding just to launch this product? Absolutely. So yeah, manufacturing is great. Um, anything in particular you want to look at first as we enter a new product category? Yeah, so the first is about the uh, fixed investment, about the uh, factory, about mm. the machine, or are we trying to uh, just outsource, find some partners to do the production for us? So great, that's, great. Yeah. So I actually do have some information on that. Um, I'm going to open up an exhibit for you. Uh, and just let me know what you think or what you see. Give me half a second. Here we go. Great. So from this, uh, this chart, we can see a uh, different manufacturing utilization rates of. So the three plants are all our plants, right? Or their perspective plants, their perspective plants that our client is looking to, um, if we were to enter this market, perspective plants that um, our client is considering uh, using to manufacturing the their new hot tiles. Great. So look, it seems like plant three uh, is at only 70% utilization rate and the plant and it's pretty much stable at 70 percent rate mm -hmm. and yeah do we have any other data um i mean what's their offer what i mean i mean how i mean what what are the uh what are the capacity capacity that we expect to use and what about their, the plant locations? And we need to take the supply chain into consideration. Is it sufficient and financially mm -hmm. reasonable enough to manufacturing in this specific plant? Great. So great, great question. Um, so I have some information. So plant one has a large capacity expansion in 2016. Um, plant two is a central hub for health board products and has been absorbing increasing regional sales. And plant three is catering the regions with lower house sales. So, uh, and the same factories can be used for producing tiles and housing boards. So um, just give me that information, what, do you, what would you think that is uh, a good path for our client to move forward with? So for the plant one, it's it expand, expanded in, 2016, right? Yeah. So after the expansion, and that's why we see there is a dip from 2016 to 2017. Great, yeah. Because they expand their capacity. And any information on their uh location features? Are they located in um Hazo Bazo area or uh no, there, there's no information on that, but um yeah, the the Capa the capacity expansion is the main uh, key takeaway. Got it. So uh, regarding the plan two, so it's actually in the uh, in our in our industry ideal location. So it easily access to the retailers to the markets, and that is why and the capacity is almost reach to ninety percent. Almost mm -hmm. full. Um, will is is the plan to have any any plan in expansion and expand in the future? Uh, no, no such plans. No, no plan to expand. Okay, so about the uh, plant three, 
Uh, about the plan three, so not not many houses are sold there. And that's why the utilization is pretty stable and uh, not that high, around 70%. So um, I think, yeah, I think, uh, do, do we have any further information on what are the uh, the prices if we plan to uh, set up our uh, manufacturing in plant one, two or three? Oh no, you could you could consider that um the prices that you um the prices from the uh, market side. So a hundred a hundred dollars per square foot uh, will be remain pretty constant. Um, but just just big you know overall takeaway of these three plants, what do you consider is um what do you what do you think our clients should um um should take away from this exhibit uh, in regards to which plant would be attractive? So I mean. Uh, we don't, I mean, even though we don't have much information from the plant one, um, so my my hypothesis here is the plant one is the uh, most attractive one. It is because mm -hmm. uh, they are attractive. They must have some advantage. They, they probably have some advantage in the supply chain management, in the lo lo logistic. Uh, therefore, they, they, I mean, they are pretty much at full capacity over the past mm. years and that's why they have actual resources to expand mm, great great okay great um so uh, our clients ceo is entering the room and they would like to know just your brief thoughts whether you recommend uh what your recommendation is uh, could you let him know what you've uh, found so far yeah great can i take a moment to structure the shots yeah please go ahead Great. So our client want to uh, is considering to our client's question is whether should they launch hot tile products and to reach one billion uh sales within one year. So our recommendation is yes, and they should go for that uh product and try this market. So first reason uh, the the reason is the one is the market overall market is around three point five billion um dollars. So which means we we are given that we are we have we have very strong history in the um uh in the industry with twenty years experience. So it's reasonable and achievable for us to catch around thirty percent of the uh, market. And the second is uh, but meanwhile we need to take the sales marketing and how to manufacture uh uh within within head to maximize our revenue and our cost. And also meanwhile, we uh, so for the next step, we could look at, is there any way to keep expand our revenue? So maybe we want to consider to launch hot, um, uh, super hot tiles, which has larger uh, market size. And then we can, after we launch, uh, successfully launch the product, we can further, uh, optimize our supply chain, logistic, and manufacturing issues to achieve higher profit. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um. <laughs> so yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have about half an hour. Just do a time check. Um, yeah, we can. Yeah. 
Great. Yeah. How How do you feel? Uh, that That was. <laughs> that oh was... yeah, that was. I mean, it's it was quite confusing because I I thought it just planned to launch a a product, name it as a hot tile. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the, I was so confused in why there's hot tile, super hot tile, uh, and yeah. Yeah. This is the um uh, on the promise the hot tiles product category. So it's like the um you know like the rough gloves or you know just coming up with like a you know um you know a bright light bulb you know product category you know what i mean it's just like um uh it's a product category not particularly like a new branded product a new kind of um so yeah maybe i could have given you more of a um a better job with the k the prop k open the opening for that but um yeah um but overall yeah what do you what do you think um if anything, like I like it, it I, I think you kind of you know saw that later on the case, like for you know the the last forty percent of the case, it was really starting to like get kind of messy. Um, but you know the, you actually really didn't do that bad of a job. It's all I'll give my you know kind of thoughts. You missed some pretty key key questions. So all the more all like key points, which all the more reasons is great that we went over a manufacturing case because I think that. It just highlights so much about what we talked about last time about like your unfamiliar unfamiliarity with um mm. like physical products you know products mm. and services um like you're quite strong with the services industry but you know not so much so i think that this was just a great great case you know looking mm. at it now regarding um where some kind of gaps in are your your considerations for what um a a product you know a physical like manufactured product uh would uh, be considered so yeah I mean if you do you have any other thoughts I mean I we're totally fine for time but do you have any other thoughts uh thoughts I think I mean the uh I think I think opening is okay and clarity uh, opening is okay framing is not bad and about mm -hmm. market yeah. size estimation, I mean, I made a mistake. It's about the um, uh, yeah, it's I I I put down three hundred million population and a hundred million household, mm -hmm. and That's then I, yeah. when I start the calculation, I use a three hundred million. That's why I finally oh. got some the the number that is three times higher than what mm -hmm. we expect. So uh uh yeah, so it's I mean you can I mean I'm not sure can you see that, but it's quite. Oh, it's blurry. blurry. But it's quite messy. I mean, my yeah. point is, my head note is quite messy. So I mean that that's probably the reason it's why. Uh, I you you remember? It seems like every time, almost every time, when we dive into the math part, anything re related with calculations, uh, I mean they're usually a kind of structure. Uh, mm -hmm. exactly. to, to do the calculations. And the uh my handwriting just uh, and I, it's there and there a number mixed together. So it's for myself. It's really hard to read, and mm -hmm. that's why I I, I mean that's kind of a quite um a uh, a thing that's quite annoying. I think I I should put some effort to uh mm -hmm. to fix that. So how well, to make I, a? Can you, can you actually um un unblur your screen and I I didn't get to see your paper because it was blurred. I mean it's uh even though it's not blurred it's still it's still blurred. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, no, actually actually I I want to I, I I just want to see it really quick um if if just like exactly what like your kind of handwriting looks like um because perhaps perhaps your handwriting is not super the issue um you want to stop you go to the stop video or the video icon then. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, got yeah. it. Yeah. And then could I see? Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. All right, I, I think I have, I think I have some suggestions. Yeah. Um, but um, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, and then handwriting or um, I think using shorthand would be really important. Like instead of like old customers, you just do OC or new customers NC. You know, and then make a table like that or uh, conversion rate, just CR, you know, and that way you can take, you can just quickly, um, kind of put together a calculation, but yeah, also your handwriting is really big. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Um, 
But um, yeah, <laughs> any, any, other, any other thoughts? Because you actually, you actually, you're, you did quite well in a number of areas. Um, and so, yeah, it's just um, this, this, this case was also, uh, you know, I wouldn't be too, you know, anything about it. this case was pretty, um, confusing, you know, or in in some cases, like, so um, I wouldn't be too hard on yourself, but um, yeah. Anyways, I could totally, I could show you what what um what I ended up seeing if if you don't have anything else. Well, I think, yeah, I think I I mean then moving on to the uh, 2013 to 2017, oh, it's just uh. I mean, I don't know why, but I have the uh, I don't I don't know why, but I have the uh, the the idea that hotel is our brand and super hotel is another brand. So I don't know why I have that idea so rigid and embedded in my head. So even though you offer the uh, the second the second exhibit, I still I still confusing. So I mean, especially the two thousand the number, I it doesn't click. At all, I don't know what two thousand is. Still, I I still don't know what two thousand is. You 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 remember there are five hundred so and there are hot hot tile and another fifteen hundred uh super hot tile. Mm -hmm. It it seems like there is nothing related with with what we just calculated. Yeah. So um. So what was important uh was and we can go over the case, but you know I'll, I'll just say it now the the important consideration you know was was that you could tell that um that for each one uh for example this one is you know two thousand right. However, we have the hot tiles product category is twenty five percent, and then this one's twelve hundred four hundred is twenty five percent, and then nine you know twenty five percent. So the the actual um. The conclusion is the hot tiles penetration. The overall market for this like barbecue deck tiles mm -hmm. kind of uh, barbecue deck tiles kind of market household buying is twenty five percent of it is hot tiles. And so what they would they would have liked you to take back into this was that they would consider the um the twenty five percent that you would get from the exhibit one multiplied by the total number of customers of people that are just buying barbecue decks as a whole. To get the actual like the number of customers that will purchase um like this hot tiles product category and then from there you would have your um you know your dollar figure you 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 uh, i was trying to get you to say the size of a tile um but pretty much yeah pretty much you were you were pretty much there i i i wouldn't i wouldn't give you too hard of a time i wasn't sure if you had gotten seven percent or 25 or something but um yeah around this time like you had got you had done so well um you would ask almost almost directly the fifty percent, and then with existing decks, and then replacement rate, and conversion rate, um, and then from there, um, just the the key key issue was that um, when I gave you, well, I, I could just I could just go over. Okay, I'll just, I'll just do it now. the the biggest The biggest issue right away was that with the market sizing, you hadn't asked what exactly market well, you were sizing. You kind of just jumped into the sizing. When the overall the overall goal, if if you had asked, okay, we're doing a market sizing, um, just to clarify, what you know, is, are we calculating like number of tiles or dollar figure of tiles and for what kind of tiles? And I would have shared with you the market sizing, the market size our client would like you to calculate is the 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 market value in dollars per year of hot tiles. You know, so not not like of of number of decks that need to be replaced because I think you had calculated that at one point is I think you had gone to I think 1.35 million or something and then just called it that but ultimately the what the case was hoping it was what the you know the client was hoping for you to to calculate was the the total opportunity um which is the 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 dollar figure uh sales you know a dollar figure felt <laughs> the dollar figure uh revenue market size in dollars per year uh for hot tiles not number of decks that you know, not number of possible customers and so without having so so yeah without having made that very very clear um uh in the very before he started everything in this market sizing um we were in a tough spot <laughs> you know because 
Uh, but because you were doing so well, you can see 100 million, then 50, and then here, and then you calculate, and you got here. Um, however, like you know, I, I you know, without I, I needed to push you a little bit more forward to finally get the price and ultimately, you know, get some kind of figure here. And again, like the the actual dollar figure. So something that you know you had you know whatever was that that's a, a tile is only 0.5 square feet, and so the total price would have been actually twenty thousand dollars. At least you know this is their this is their you know this is the case is whatever. Um, this is the case, and as well with the twenty five percent that we would have gotten from the first exhibit. Um, we would have gone for um, 340, we would have multiplied by 25% for the hot tiles, right? Um, because this is this is this is the market total customers for hot tiles and super hot tiles, but right, the market sizing would have been to calculate the market size for just the hot tiles. And so that was definitely I, I when when you had jumped right into the market sizing, I was like, oh no, like maybe, you know, I'm not sure if I should jump in, but yeah, without really clarifying what market size we're calculating for, um, we were we were we were off to a, a not super great start. Um, and then by the way, also your your opening was great. Your opening was great, except you know now we would say that like oh man, I wish you know clarify whether Hot Tiles is a product or like a new brand or um. So just you know I I you had asked a lot of questions about the um the product itself. It's just it's a shame that somehow that slipped through the cracks of like you know, whether Hot Tiles is a brand or like a, a, a class of, of products. And so this is a product category. It was means to be a product category, not a, um, like a brand of like, you know, Band-Aid, you know, like, a, like, you know, um, like, um, I don't know, like, like, I don't know. Anyways, um, and something it also, um, didn't consider was the current sales channels. Um, and so being the Walmart, Home Depot, Costco. And so, so this, these are the, these, these were the big, big main takeaways um number one is and by the way your your um your structure was badass it was awesome you had gone over um pricing let me see you had gone over um existing market we hopped right into that the product the value prop that was great um the go-to market strategy that was also great and the uh, economic analysis um with the revenue that was also you know the pricing um, there was a little bit of a, you know, um, pricing in the market strategy bucket and pricing in the economic analysis bucket. So um, I think, you know, being a little bit more distinct, like Misi between the two buckets would have been good. But overall, your structure was, was pretty great. It's pretty great. Um, so, yeah, so far, uh, so far, you know, the case is going great. You know, opening structure, your structure was also took about 110 seconds. So you were spot on with that, too. Um and then also delivery. I, I would have just said push forward with your delivery. I'll 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 send all this in emails. So don't worry about don't worry about getting this all down. Um <clears throat> and uh, or like writing this all down right now. The market sizing, um, had you asked like what exactly we were calculating for in the beginning, I think you would have gotten it. It's just it's just without having without having like uh because you were doing so well and you ended up getting the right numbers. Um <clears throat> and just being like, you know, more clean with your writing and stuff like that. But yeah, overall, just um, um, you know, making sure in the market size. The first thing yes is what exactly market size are we asking to calculate? Um, and then um, yeah, and then also just cleaning up the math a bit. Um, but overall, you 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 got there. And so finally, the the brainstorm. So this is the the brainstorm was um pretty much pretty much um as you can see here. It's like um, with a manufacturing because we had talked about this last week, but I think, you know, having I, we maybe could have gone over it before this case started. But like last week when we were talking about like, I don't know, like, like, you know, just I was like grabbing stuff around my desk and like talking about vaccines and like, you know, cars on the highway or whatever. Um, but this is all manufacturing questions are largely the same, you know, whether it's a car or a vaccine or a, a tube of toothpaste, it largely goes from from raw materials to manufacturing and then to distribution right like that that largely is like the the product and so there's some variations on this right where it's like you first do id you know idea before you gather raw materials or you gather raw materials and then there's some engineering between the raw materials and manufacturing so maybe it's more like idea of a new product if this is like a brand new product right so but this is not a brand new product this is like some kind of barbecue tile whatever but like just like you know with your with any manufacturing Kind of consideration a great thing to do with um with brainstorming is to 
like do the whole supply chain. And so is, oh, can you brainstorm some considerations for a client if they were to enter this market? It would have been like first, the raw materials, and then second, engineering, third, manufacturing, and fourth, distribution. And then you did great with marketing branding. Um, and however, like um, you, you had missed that, you know, the raw materials and manufacturing, because you, you, you were thinking very much like, um, you know, businessmen, like distribution channels and marketing branding. And, and that was definitely, um, definitely a key part of it. But um, just something we had talked about, like last week about supply chain of a physical product, like, a, you know, a laptop, a, you know, a water bottle, uh, you know, anything, it largely follows this kind of um, supply chain. Um, so that's definitely just going forward. Well, yeah, with, whether it's a pharmaceutical product, whether it's, you know, a, a book publisher, a printing, you know, a, an, even like a newspaper publisher for like physical newspapers, uh, you know, you need, you need raw materials to, you need to procure raw materials to print paper for a newspaper, right? And you need some manufacturing, printing, printing press for newspapers. And of course, distribute, you know, whether, you know, you, you have newsstands or whatever, you know, um, and so just keeping this in mind, and even for like a pharmaceutical product, maybe they're you know raw material, but there's maybe there's a lot more research in the beginning, like research before we procure raw materials, but largely it will follow the supply chain for a so that's so I think you get the idea. So moving forward with current with later manufacturing questions, um, you know, because that ultimately I think I think you can see, you know, where I was trying to push you towards, which was this bucket you were missing, which was the manufacturing. And then finally, we, we would have come up with the second exhibit. I, you know, you asked for more information about the plants, and then drew the conclusion. Yeah, plant one is probably the best because it's gonna, you know, there was a huge capacity thing. Plant two, there's all this like, um, it's all this like cannibalization and all this regional sales. That's just like, you know, total pain in the butt. Um, uh, for you know, and then plant three is just in a crappy area, and so plant one would have been the way to go. And then from there, it was a recommendation, and then, um. Yeah, and so I think you can I think you can tell that like um um like your your overall your overall um kind of uh familiarity with uh the 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 air the the steps of a case and the you know start to finish um however it's just a lot a lot of it is like you know your familiarity with the service industry versus the product industry uh for the product category of you know businesses. Um, you know, with the supply chain, and then also, um, also just I I don't know I don't know whether like this is the right way to say it. Um, but whether you're I I don't think I don't think you're afraid to like really clarify and you know what what information you need because um, but for whatever reason, some key parts um, whether it was like the market sizing or uh, what exactly is this is this a product category what, for whatever reason like the um for whatever reason you had missed some like really key kind of um clarifying questions whether it's the product and the i mean you had asked a lot about the product i just for whatever reason it, it just slipped through the cracks uh and then also so yeah that was a lot that was a lot and i'll try to put this together in the email that i'll send you but um that was largely the the really big um takeaways so yeah yeah right Hmm. It seems like I still don't. I'm still not familiar with manufacturing that much. You know, it's um. I mean, even though I have read read some read 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 some news from the industry and listen to some cases, but still, it's like, uh. I mean, it's may it might be quite obvious who is familiar with manufacturing already, but not that familiar, not that obvious for me. Mm -hmm. Um, Like for example, like what is product category? So I thought that's a very specific product. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and that's one thing. And the other is, I think, I think the case itself, it's also, I think it's also had some, I mean, it's not, I mean, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm still kind of, I, I need to take a second look at the uh, exhibit one, and exhibit two. I mean, the, the, the material offered by the case itself is also not, it's a, I mean, it seems like not very coherent. Yeah, yeah. What, what are the two thousand? I still, I'm still very confused. What are the two thousands? I mean, yeah. So, I mean, 
I mean, there are two possibilities. So one is, yeah, the casebook made a mistake. I mean, the 2000 the number itself doesn't matter at all. It's only about the fraction. And the other chance is, yeah, the 2000 is some uh, number with real meaning. It just uh, doesn't, I mean, I if, if that's so, I need to look into to figure out what's the uh, relationship with 2000 and the, uh, and the first uh, estimation practices. Mm -hmm. Well, here let me let me also pull up. Um, so this is this is from the uh, geez, this is from the MCO. This is from the MCO bootcamp of like the mini and the module eleven mini uh -huh. MBA. Yeah, uh -huh. what makes a business run? And so this is just pretty much like you know for the for a video game company is the idea uh -huh. generated. It's you know raw raw materials and you know manufacturing is done is distributed and then the consumer like you know this is like some kind of you know, marketing branding issue. And so they gave they gave this example of a video game company, right? Like you can see the supply chain. But also they had done the same with they had done the same with the mango. mango. Right? <laughs> yeah. They've done the same with the mango cart with the supply chain of like, I don't know, you have the idea of selling a mango. So you, you know, you get a raw material, you manufacture, you know, a raw material, which is a seed. You the you manufacture it with as a you know plant grow harvest mango. You distribute it, you know, to you know give it to a grandmother to sell the mango and then you maybe brand it or marketing with the with the consumer to you know maybe you make a, a nice fancy mango stand or you know whatever um and so yeah from from mango carts to oh shit, to video games to you know you know sunscreen to laptop to car or to vaccine um it largely follows this right and so I wouldn't I wouldn't try and get too much in your head about like you know manufacturing da 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 because once it once you kind of get into these buckets, like naturally it all kind of like come, you know, not you know, naturally, but like you can immediately imagine like, okay, what kind of facilities do we need? What kind of or you see what I mean, or like what kind of engineers do we need? What kind of facilities do we need? What kind of sales channels do we need? Like Walmart, Home Depot, Amazon, or you know, just like door-to-door -door salesman kind of deal, you know? Uh, and then, you know, and then marketing, branding. So yeah, again, I wouldn't, you know, I, I think you you had said something about like, oh, you know, like. I'm just not familiar with manufacturing, but I, I I wouldn't get too too much in your head about it. Like it's um um you know it it it's like like for you know for I I don't mean this in like a you know oh you you you're so you know you're too so stupid, but it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward. I mean it could you know for every industry and product and whatever it could you know the amount of complexity can just you know you could you could spend your entire life you can spend your entire life you know trying to think of you know how to your your entire career is like how to like you know, manufacturing like a little widget or like, or, or like, like a manufacturing a nail, you know what I mean? Like a nail to, you know, like, you know, to like make a house, like your entire career could be to, you know, be how the best manufacturer, like a nail, you know? So it's like, you know, in, in, you know, an infinite amount of complexity, entire careers built on this kind of stuff, but ultimately a very big level is just that, you know, four or five, six step kind of, you know, supply chain. Um, So, you know. Yeah, so, definitely. So yeah, we still have some some time left. I mean, let's not talk about case. <laughs> something else. So how okay. about you? I mean, how's everything? Um, and really good. Um, it's just I I got that I got that um I got that that Wall Street Journal. My my cousin's brother. Um, my 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 cousin's my cousin's husband sent me that Wall Street Journal article. Uh -huh. Just since then, that's just kind of. I think that was just kind of like a splash of cold water on myself. I like, like just kind of like, yeah, this, this management consulting, like dream job kind of thing, even, even not even working at, you know, freaking McKinsey or Deloitte or something, but just getting like a manufacturer, like a consulting job, like anywhere. It's just probably not realistic for the next like six, eight, one, six, eight months, you know. Whatever. Really? I mean, is that, is that what the article says so? Um, the article says the article says that they're pushing all of the all the MBA hires. They're they're like pushing all the MBA hires to April of next year. So all the MBA MBA hires that already got offers and signed signed the paper or whatever, they're getting pushed to next April. Um, and those are MBA hires, let alone like let alone entry level analysts like PowerPoint Excel crunchers, you know. Um, and there's just there's just so little work like there's a, the article said one consultant uh in the past like nine months she's only been working for three months and the rest of the time she's on bench um and so i think we talked before about this is a great time 
this is a great time to um to network and like get a bunch of you know getting networking calls however it's just you know the the kind of dream of you know um you, you know what i mean getting an interview and three weeks later getting offered and then starting in, in two months from now like two months from today is just reading it at least for me where where i'm at which is like you know just out of college with you know a year and a half two years of work experience entry-level analyst it's just not realistic for me right now uh it's just not realistic to expect and so i'm looking at other like like other types of work right now ngos actually sound super cool um like some nonprofits or um you know or even like working in some drug addiction like whatever however just yeah so that, that was kind of a, like a splash of water on my face i'm like okay wait this is like i need a pivot on this news i can't just like kind of blindly like oh i'll just do you know i'll just so yeah that, that has been kind of a uh a splashy water on the face like all right well let's pivot you know because yeah so yeah but i mean i mean focus on the um i mean i won't say focus on positive side but um you know we have to we have to embrace the reality um what i want to say is you know i have been working on sustainability topic for a while right and uh, you know, before I jump in this position, I'm, I mean, this position I'm working as a part time position. So it's uh, because I need more time to practice case to 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 learn the thing that I I, I want to learn. And I just finished the uh um uh, uh the the Stanford uh education program on sustainability uh, pro, uh, uh education. And also I got, I mean I I submit the uh. Uh, uh, money, but I haven't prepared yet. So it's about the uh, CFA, right, yeah. CFA ESG investing. So it's also a uh, uh, like a cert certificate uh, that mm -hmm. I mean to to convince others that I know something about sustainability and ESG. So and uh, before I jump in this role, I mean I have over over thirteen or fourteen months that I didn't do anything. Uh, almost, almost didn't do anything. So I quit my previous job. So if you look at me, I, I think I share my documents with you. And I uh, you look at my uh, previous job, I uh, quit at the end of 2021, uh, 20, uh, 20, 2021, around uh, September, October, I don't, I couldn't recall. And then I, it, the previous job is too consuming. It can consume me too much, so I need a I need a long break. And also, the area I I used to work with is about U.S. China relations and doing business with Chinese and figure out opportunity between. And then you know it is, and by the late twenty twenty one, so I was con convinced that market is gone. Mm -hmm. So just I mean, so it's kind of I I was experiencing the same problem like the big layoff of the uh, tech workers at the beginning of the year or at the end of last year. So it's like the industry is gone. And they, 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 I mean, at this moment, the industry, uh, the overall industry is shifting and changing so so quickly. So thinking about the generative AI and thinking about, um, I mean, it's just, and thinking about the, uh, the, the clean energy, you know, Tesla and the clean energy and sustainability this movement really and also we have the tool to really increase our efficiency so it's changed it's changed the way that we imagine how future works um i mean it it the, the i mean in, in short it's just the future is now every industry is is will change to some extent and they, they cannot operate as the same way so that is, I think that is the reason to why the uh, the hiring process is so turmoil at this moment because the company is not quite sure. Oh, yeah, they, they, yeah, they yeah, don't exactly. So yeah, so I think the this is the time uh, you like it or not, but this is the time we have to position ourselves ahead of the time. So we need to stand at the frontier. So that's why I say you need to consider how to seize. The opportunity in the Bay Area because everything new is happening here, and there's nowhere else. It's like the San Francisco Bay Area is so much 
new energy here. And even though you, you may want to consider join a startup that doing something super cool, something super frontier, I mean, then that is your value added compared to other MBA. You know, think about MBA. They don't have much. I don't think they have much advantage. You know, they 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 put two full year, but I have to go. But to put two full year in the school mm -hmm. and isolate them from industry. I mean, this is not competitive. Yeah, great investment. In, in, in like, yeah, that's a good point. Damn. So don't yeah. don't be I mean don't be afraid and don't be too discouraged and and you already have so much time that you didn't work and so it's now if you can get in touch with the real world real industry anything new anything real will be really helpful. Hmm. Yeah. And just just don't just just keep keep pursuing what you what you see yourself in the next 5 to 10 years and don't settle down with some basic basic like, job i mean because they will be gone soon yeah. if you don't act proactively you will be laid off reactively yeah just yeah that's that's great insight because in the bay area what what is happening now is you know there's sustainability there's ai there's biotechnology exactly like, the, yeah the only, the only other place i think of that has that is like boston you know um, like Chicago is largely, you know, as a very diverse. Now, Chicago, Chicago and Boston, the energy level is yeah. not at the same compared to exactly. the other. Uh, and and yeah. New, York, New York is all finance. And so New yeah. York is finance, um, you know, I don't know, like uh, maybe maybe Austin, like Texas is more like manufacturing or I, I don't know, some high tech stuff. But you're right, yeah. between, between here, between SF Bay Area and Boston, um, there isn't quite that much, you know what I mean? I, exactly what you're saying. Not not so much nowhere else between you know, here in Boston and maybe that's about yeah. it. Are so on the on the cutting edge frontier of the world technology. Yeah, yeah. And 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 think about the autopilot, the the all automobile. I mean that's, yeah. I mean that's uh. And you know there re recently there are research about the superconduct conduct. Have you ever read the news? That's uh quite a thing. I mean, you mean like. Uh, do you mean like super Taiwan, Taiwan, China, US kind of? No, like? no, no. Su super, super conduct material. It's like, uh, uh, I mean, this is not real for now. The, the, it's a, a Korean uh, Korean team launched. They find out a material that can be super conductive, which means, I mean, if that is real, that will change. I mean, it will, it will change the, yeah, the, the world that, yeah. like uh, a nuclear bomb. You know, I would say that. So that will change the way that we use energy. That we, uh, but that's what's not proved yet. So it's just from a lab. They claim they find such materials, but anyway, it's uh, there's so many things, and so much new things are going on, and and also you know what? There's another advantage to 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 a uh, base in a San Francisco Bay Area. It's like, uh, I I can feel the culture in here. They tolerate. Uh, mistake they tolerate uh they tolerate mm -hmm. try and error so much more than other areas mm -hmm. so if you i mean for example if you have all of job for like a certain period of time so if you are based in china if you are based in new york i mean that's not something you want to be uh be with but here in san francisco then oh okay so what what kind of new things you try? I mean that's their mentality. So what kind of new? They they, they just assume you have been keeping try new things, new areas, and do something exciting and to challenge the the status quo. I mean that's so that's what I appreciate here so much. Wow, where where are you located? You're you, I, you're in San Mateo or where where? Yeah, are I live in, I live in San Mateo. Okay. Wow, I never. You're right. I, I really have been like in that context of a career, I really have been taking it into like taking it for granted because I just live, I just live here. I'm from here, you know? Um, gosh. Yeah, that's huge. I, I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say. I mean, I mean, you know, the past is the past, but it's just, you know, the past is the past. I just have today. How would you recommend I, I approach this? Cause I just like, I, I, 
I mean, I, pick up I, some. I mean, pick up pick up some well. some area. I mean, just a. I mean, I, I, I think it's always good to uh, to practice like how you envision yourself in the next five years. So where you want to put your energy and time to harness your uh, your specialty. I mean, you have to find your specialty, even though you if you join a consulting as a generalist, you have to find a spe specialty. And 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 also, I mean, the, the, the journey you're preparing for consulting and for me, and even though I didn't end up get a consulting job, but it's already benefited me a lot. So think in a structured way, communicate in a structured way, and how to do an industry analysis. Yeah. And that really helped me a lot. So so I mean, don't be discouraged, even though you cannot join the consulting industry right away. Maybe you after two years, you you find another job that's very really, really interesting and really nourish your growth, and you come back to the industry as a uh, consultant, you know, as an MBA level. So that's also a possibility. So life is. I mean, doors, there are a lot of doors, especially in San Francisco. I mean, there are new, com and, 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 and I think first is read and learn what is happening and find out how you envision yourself in the future. And then you go to talk to yeah. people. You go to, you go to not only talk to people, but also you need to show your, show your hard work so i help you learn so and so what i have read so and so what i what projects i have tried so and so and so i would like to be part of that so for example i want to be part of sustainability i i, I didn't just sit there so i joined some i mean even though i have no background but i joined a nonprofit that do that so i mean me by the time i joined the nonprofit, i barely know anything about sustainability and esg but then I spend the time educating myself and read and get in touch with the industry. Uh, and now I will say I know a lot, but I, 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 it's way much better than what I, when I was. How did you, how did you decide sustainability was the path that you were like, you would take forward? I, you know what? That's kind of, but I have to go really, I mean, I really have to go, but I, I like to, yeah, but yeah. that's something really, really interesting is it's not like, I mean, just just don't believe in pa passion or dream. That kind of rosy world. That's uh, it's like sustainability, kind of like my only my only way because I don't have any any expertise. I don't have expertise in bio. I don't know how to do the engineer. I didn't study physics, and I also don't want to train myself to do the soft engine uh so so software. So I know I know people yes. with some. Like some some time of training, they can do data, they can do software, but I don't want to do that because yeah. I I study statistics when I was an uh, undergrad, so I kind of know what they are doing, and I think that's way too trivial and not too entertainment. So, yeah. so that is thing I definitely don't want to, but I want I but I need to find a way to connect me with the world. Then I figure out oh, sustainability. I mean, why I located sustainability because I read McKinsey, Bain, and BCG their uh lookout on 2023. So what happening in the next 10 years? I see, oh, there are 10 big themes. So which theme I'm more interested? Yeah. So those are the themes that they are pouring money in. Those are the themes that their clients are interested in. So, oh, I say, oh, sustainability. I kind of know, I didn't know much. But 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 it's like this it is not an, an industry yeah. that that so I I still get a chance to to learn. I, I think I, I definitely want to let you go because you said eleven thirty, yeah. but maybe that's something I should just lean into my because I have a chemical engineering undergrad, my biomedical engineering, um, you know, background. Maybe I should just lean into biotechnology, pharmaceuticals right now. You know, because that's where my experience lies, even though I'm not like you said, it's a rosy, rosy picture to just say, oh, you know, I'll know. You know what I mean? I maybe I should just lean into my current experience to just see where that goes. Mm -hmm. from. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I have to go. But yeah, really good Thank talk you, and uh, cheer up. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> cool. Cool. OK, thanks. All. So, great. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.